Number 9 then from paper 1 of the 2017 New Higher Maths. There we go, it's a 5 mark question this time on recurrence relations. A sequence is generated by this recurrence relation. There's an unknown coefficient here, m. For the first two marks, given these two terms, these two consecutive terms, u1 and u2, find the value of m for two marks. Now, one of the guiding principles in the marking is an answer on its own with no working cannot get full marks unless otherwise stated in the marking scheme. And certainly that applies here. You could quite easily do that in your head. But if you just write down the answer m equals whatever, I've not done it yet, you'd only get one of the two marks. No, they want you to explicitly put those in, which is what you should do first anyway. The following term is m times the previous term. The following term, that's u2. 13 is m times the previous one. I'll put that in the order of 28m plus 6. That stated explicitly gets the first mark. And then rearrange it. There's only one mark for the next part. And you don't have to show all the minutiae of the calculations you do in the higher. So you could equally just say 28 will equal, take the 6 away, which is going to be 7. So m is going to be 7 over 28. Or you could just leap straight in with a quarter. I've started with the 7 now. So m equals 1 quarter. There's the second mark. If you just stated m equals a quarter without anything else, you only get one mark out of two. Now part B, first part. This is a standard one. One mark. Explain why this sequence has approaches a limit as n tends to infinity. There. Anyway, now normally that's a standard. You put down the wording. The sequence approaches a limit as, and the reason is, this multiplying number is a proper fraction. So you could write that as a quarter is a proper fraction. What you're all meant to do is use the letter a. There's no mention of a. Shouldn't even really write m. But since m's been defined, you could state m because it's previously been defined in this question as the value of a quarter. But normally you go in with a quarter. As a quarter is a proper fraction, which is a perfectly valid statement because that's the actual reasoning behind it. If you multiply by a proper fraction, whose value is less than one, is only a part of, then this product will become smaller. But normally you'd say it's a proper fraction if it's between one and negative one. Neater than that would be to say if it's absolute value, those two lines, the same way as you would say the magnitude of a vector, if the absolute value is less than negative one, but normally you just write this. But, and here's this little thorny part, in last year's paper, they stated that in future papers, meaning this one onwards, they'd want you to write this and another statement. And the fact that that's only valid if this is a linear recurrence relation. So you'd have to write, and it is a linear recurrence relation. And last year they stated in the Martin Scheme, that would have to be the case from 2017 onwards in order to get the mark. And lo and behold, in this year's Martin Scheme, they say, do not penalise MD that doesn't put this further statement down. In other words, you just get the mark for doing that. However, I would just write it all out for safety because sometimes you just don't know what they're going to do in the marking scheme. And the second part B, calculate this limit for two marks. Now again, in the marking scheme here, they're quite rightly, I suppose they're saying, if you put down the answer and the correct answer at that, with no working at all, you're not going to get any marks for it. Not even just the, the one mark out of two for the correct answer. They're looking for you to demonstrate it. You should always do that with every question anyway. Don't assume that they're going to be generous in any way and give you marks with no working. State the obvious. It's the safest way. Well, there's two ways you can go in with that. You go in with the formula. L equals B over 1 minus A, for which you'll get no marks. Because what's these? what are these A's and B's? If you do that, you get the mark once you start putting in the figures. B is the 6 and A was the quarter. If you write that down, you get the first mark, and then the next mark's just for evaluating that. You can either think that's 6 divided by 3 quarters, or you could just say multiply everything by 4 to get rid of this awkward extra little fraction here. So that would be 24 over 4 minus 1. 
3 into 24 is 8. L equals 8 gets the second mark. Put L equals 8 down on its own with no justifying working and you get none of them. Alternatively, you can be more rigorous than using that formula, which after all you could argue is just rote and state, well, what does reaching a limit means? Reaching a limit means if you start with that number and multiply it by M and add on 6, you end up with the same number again. In other words, you've reached a fixed point there, you've reached a limit, you're not going anywhere else. Then taking that across, that means you've only got 3 quarters of L equals 6. So L is going to be, and then instead of dividing by 3 quarters, do the part separately. So that's 6. The dividing 4 multiplies, the multiplying 3 divides. And there you go. 3 into 6 goes 2, 2 fours are 8 again. So putting down the meaning of the limit gives you one mark. Evaluating it gives you the second. Remember to put this in just in case anyway, this extra statement. Not just it approaches a limit because it's a proper fraction, but also because it's a linear recurrence relation. It looks like the equation of a line. There's no squares or anything else in it.